good afternoon. I guess it's good morning, everyone. I think it's morning by you. Um, my name is uh, Joe Sturbus, and I'm from uh, Tripler Army Medical Center uh, in Honolulu, Hawaii. Uh, so it's a real pleasure to be here. Uh, thank you so much, Donald Sturbus. Uh, it's nice to meet you today, and thank you so much for your time to be as a lecturer today. Uh, so I am a doctor me from the University Hospital. Today here in our meeting room, we have uh, the uh, urology student and uh, a postgraduate student and medical student. And we are waiting for the, a very interesting lecture from you. And thank you so much again for, uh, for this time today. That's great. All right, so uh, next slide, please, Katie. So uh, this is the hospital in which I work, uh, Tripler. It is uh, uh, just at uh, the airport. I, I see the full slide on screen. Can I see the full slide on screen? Um, yes. Slideshow. Okay. There we go. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, next slide, please, Katie. So this is uh, Honolulu. This is where we live. Uh, obviously, it's a very uh, beautiful spot. Um, I have never been able to visit Vietnam, uh, but I certainly know about the city of Hue, and I've always thought that the uh, Perfume River is one of the most beautifully named rivers in the world. Thank you so much. Um, Next slide, please, Katie. So a little about me. Uh, I'm a urologic oncologist. I finished my training in 2009 at um, Memorial Sloan Kettering in New York. Um, and I currently am in charge of all the residency programs in our hospital. So uh, this is the city of Chicago, where I'm from. This is where I grew up and went to medical school. Um, and I have a picture of this because uh, people from Chicago tend to talk very fast. So if I get too fast for the translator, I apologize, but I'll do my best. Is the picture of the chief sick uh, Next slide, please. Um, so I have uh, no disclosures except that the opinions are my own and not those of the army or the government. So, could you speak more slowly? Yes. It's difficult to. Okay. No problem. And am I loud enough? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Great. All right. Um, so this is what we'll be discussing today: uh, locally advanced bladder cancer and metastatic bladder cancer. Okay. Before we get onto those topics, however, I wanted to touch base on the AUA um, risk scores. So by way of reminder, there are low, intermediate, and high-risk scores for non-muscle invasive bladder cancer. We won't be discussing this more today, but I wanted to discuss this or show this uh, because this guides my practice when I see these patients with non-muscle invasive bladder cancer. 
Ờ, thì ông muốn mà nói hôm nay chủ yếu của đêm là không phải là nó mới screen với cái căn cancer nhưng mà sẽ uh, cái này cũng nó liên quan vì tận được việc điều trị với cái ung thư quang bị xâm lấn. Next slide please. So uh, as we move forward, this is the uh, staging system, and we'll be predominantly discussing stages T3 and T4 today. Uh, next slide, please. Um, in terms of the staging for the lymph nodes and distant mats, um, stage N1 involves just a single node in the true pelvis. Stage N2 involves multiple nodes in the true pelvis. N3 involves uh, mets to the common iliac nodes. And for distant mats, uh, bladder cancer focuses on uh, M1A as being nodes beyond the common iliacs. And M1B is when the mets go beyond the lymph nodes. Excuse me. Next slide, please. So as you can see here, uh, we'll be discussing stage 3A, 3B, 4A, and 4B. Next slide. Thank you. I'll end with that. You have a number with a phone roy. The domain of my mentor, Dr. Roger, on my day, but won't have a day. For the evaluation with these patients, once you've suspect a bladder tumor, we'll perform a cystoscopy with a transurethral resection of the bladder tumor. And I wanted to focus on the bimanual exam because it's a very easy thing to forget to do when you're doing your TURBT. And so for men where we're not used to doing bimanual exams, that would involve a finger in the rectum and a hand on top of the abdomen. And you're looking to see if you can palpate the tumor. And if you can palpate the tumor, is it fixed or is it mobile? Uh, Follow-up evaluation would be the abdomen and pelvis imaging, either a CT or an MRI. Uh, same thing for the chest. And a bone scan if there are clinical suspicion or clinical symptoms. Okay, next slide, please. So uh, for the TRBT, as I said, perform a bimanual exam both before and after. And and uh, always attempt to completely resect when possible and also ensure that you have deep muscle for proper staging. Uh, if you're at all worried about perforation, perform a cystogram at the time of the procedure. And uh, consider intravesical chemotherapy with an agent such as mitomycin at the time of TRBT, depending on the scenario. Uh, go back, Kitty. Sorry. Um, for the intravesical chemotherapy in general, 
that is not a practice that I utilize because I fear some patients will have a small perforation that I did not detect. And I've had a few patients end up with chronic pelvic pain for a period of time after this. Và những cái lột thùng nhỏ mà khi mình sử dụng thuộc hóa chất thì nó sẽ ra nó ra ngoài và đôi khi sau này sẽ gây ra bệnh nhân tình trạng là đau vùng dọc mạng tình. Obviously, there are randomized data to indicate the benefits of this intravesical chemotherapy, but the benefit is fairly small. And having had some patients with that issue, it is something I forego. Mà sử dụng hóa chất ngay nên ông tìm một số bằng chứng về những nghiên cứu tiêm thể là cái lợi ích nó không nhiều lắm. Tức là sử dụng ngay cái thời điểm mà mình hóa chất ngay cái thời điểm mà mình cắt đột nội soi. Uh, next slide, Katie. So we'll start off with stage 3A, which is, as you can see here, clinical T3, T4A, uh, or T1 through 4A with nodal disease. Thì các bạn có thể bắt đầu ông sẽ nói về cái giai đoạn 3A. Thì giai đoạn 3A tức là U nó xâm lẫn ra cái lực mở văn văn quá đó okay next slide please so for stage 3a we recommend neoadjuvant cisplatin based chemotherapy with a subsequent radical cystectomy if they cannot receive cisplatin, we recommend they go directly to cystectomy. You can consider concurrent chemo radiotherapy if not a candidate for cystectomy. And radiotherapy alone is also an option. Okay, next slide, please. In stage 3A, partial cystectomy is not recommended. Uh, next slide, Katie. So for neoadjuvant chemotherapy, the disqualifiers are hearing loss, neuropathy, Poor performance status and renal insufficiency. And again, the, the survival benefit from the neoadjuvant chemotherapy is fairly small. So for these patients who cannot get it, we just proceed directly to radical cystectomy. Uh, next slide, please. So uh, this is a meta-analysis uh, from European Urology in 2005 about the use of neoadjuvant chemotherapy. Next slide, please. So in this case, there were 11 trials, 3,005 patients. And there were 5% and 9% improvements in overall survival and disease-specific survival at five years. Okay, next slide, please. So for neoadjuvant chemotherapy, we do not utilize carboplatin uh, given that there is insufficient evidence that is effective in this setting. However, 
However, you can consider split dose cisplatin, although the efficacy might not be equivalent. But uh, có thể lắm sử dụng cái uh, tức là chia liều cisplatin ra nhưng mà đôi khi cái hiệu quả thì nó lại không không tương tự. But uh, there may be some evidence that carboplatin can be used in the adjuvant setting uh, and still have an effect. Uh, thì như vậy có thể rằng là cái việc mà sử dụng carboplatin thì còn có thể uh, sử dụng như là cái uh, hỗ trợ sau sau bộ và nó không may đi hoặc là bạn có thể phát triển hơn và hữu ích. Uh, next slide, please, Katie. So for neoadjuvant chemotherapy, we uh, recommend dose-dense MVAC for three to four cycles. So, by way of reminder, MVAC is methotrexate, vinblastine, doxorubicin, and cisplatin. Uh, the other alternative is four cycles of gemcitabine and cisplatin. Uh, next slide, please. So for adjuvant chemotherapy, there's little, excuse me, limited randomized evidence to support its use. Uh, however, there is a growing body of evidence suggesting a role for patients at a high risk of recurrence. And there's some meta-analysis data uh, for those patients with PT3, PT4, and N-positive disease, uh, there may be a benefit. Uh, next slide, please. So to review for stage 3A, once again, neoadjuvant cisplatin-based chemotherapy with subsequent radical cystectomy, and if they cannot receive cisplatin, go straight to cystectomy. Okay, next slide, please. So next we'll discuss stage 3B, which is clinical T1 through T4A, N2 or N3 disease. Okay, next slide, please. So in these patients, we recommend to start with either downstaging systemic therapy or concurrent chemoradiotherapy. Uh, next slide, please. So for downstaging systemic therapy, we recommend reassessing at two to three months following treatment. And if there's a complete or partial response, you can proceed with a cystectomy, chemo radiotherapy, or observation. If the patients progress at that point, we treat them as though they have metastatic disease. Okay. Uh, next slide, please. For concurrent chemoradiotherapy, if there's a complete response, uh, we follow them up. And if it's a partial response, we recommend BCG or surgical consolidation. If there's progression, we would treat as metastatic disease. 
bắt đầu trong trường hợp mà bệnh nọ họ tiến triển tức nó không đáp ứng thì mình phải uh, chuyển qua điều trị nó như là một cái bệnh đã bắt đầu di căn rồi. Uh, next slide please. For uh, stage 4A, these are clinical T4B, NEM and M0. Thì uh, giai đoạn 4A tức là si đi bộ B hoặc là bất kỳ uh, N hoặc mà không nào hoặc bất kỳ T hình mà không nào nhưng mà đã có di căn tức là u bất kỳ giai đoạn nào mà đã có di căn. For any patient with lymph node mats above the iliac. Hoặc là bất kỳ bệnh nhân nào mà đã có di căn hạch mà phía dưới uh, động mạch chậu chung. Next slide please. Uh, so for M0 disease, we recommend systemic therapy or concurrent chemoradiotherapy. For M1A disease, patients go straight to systemic therapy. Thì trong những cái trường hợp mà ở M0 thì, thì người ta khuyến cáo sử dụng là điều trị theo hệ thống hoặc là hoặc hoặc trị đồng thời. Trong trường hợp M1A rồi thì uh, chỉ điều trị hệ, uh, hệ thống. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, One can also consider cystectomy if there's a complete response to systemic therapy. Và mình phải cân cân nhắc xem và các môn quan toàn bộ trong những trường hợp mà mình người ta có biểu hiện là đáp ứng hoàn toàn với là cái phương pháp trị liệu. And the decision to do that would really depend on the patient's performance status, age, and other considerations. Và hoàn toàn là sự lựa chọn là phụ thuộc vào cái patient performance medicine tức là cái khả năng về cái tình trạng thể trạng của bệnh nhân. Okay, next slide, please. For metastatic disease, the first line systemic therapy is gemcitabine and cisplatinum or dose dense MVAC with growth factor, and both of those are followed by evolumab. Thì cái khi mà đúng được điều trị cái giai đoạn di căn thì cái lựa chọn đầu tiên đó là sự kết hợp giữa gemcitabine hoặc là cisplatin và sau đó theo sau là bởi evolumab một số cái thuốc gọi là kháng thể hoặc là sử dụng cái thứ hai là dùng cái DDM vắt thôi mình đã sử mình nói đó với sử dụng cái những cái yếu tố tăng trưởng hỗ trợ và cũng theo sau bởi cái khả thể đơn dòng Avalumab. Uh, next slide please. So Avalumab is a human monoclonal antibody. It's it's quite new. It is indicated for maintenance after four to six cycles of platinum-based chemotherapy. À, thì cái Avalumab này là một cái kháng thể đơn dòng mà nó tương đối mới và nó được sử dụng trong cái trường hợp bốn tới sáu liều trình trong cái trong trong cái hóa trị. And these are patients that have not progressed on the chemotherapy and also have a good performance status. Và được sử dụng đến những bệnh nhân mà họ có từ cái bệnh tiền triển mà nó có cái cái thể hiện cái egotism tức là đánh giá bệnh nhân ung thư hoặc những cái nốt sky đó nhưng mà từ không từ một tức là bệnh nhân họ vẫn có thể đi lại được và hoặc là thời gian nằm trên giường ít. Next slide please. So uh, this is an article from just two or three weeks ago in the New England Journal. Và đây là một cái nghiên cứu rất là mới ở New England Medicine cách đây khoảng vài tháng thôi, cách đây một hai hai tháng thôi. And this is addressing what we just discussed: avalumab maintenance and bladder cancer. Và cái alumab mình được có thể gọi là một cái vẫn là một cái phương pháp hiệu quả cho việc mà ung thư bằng tỷ lệ xâm lấn và di căn, ung thư đường nhiều xâm lấn và di căn. Okay, next slide, please. So as you can see here, I hope the um, the charts, uh, the pictures are good. Um, both uh, for the um, Overall population and those with PDL1 expression, uh, there was improved median overall survival. Thì các bạn thấy rằng đến đó là cái hình là hai cái biểu đồ. Thứ nhất là overall population tức là chung và cái thứ hai là biểu đồ thứ hai là cho PDL1 uh, positive là những người có cái uh, cái 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 PDL1 đến tiểu bao một thứ. Okay, next slide, please. Thì cho thấy cái này có thấy cái sự cải thiện tỷ lệ sống mà khi dùng Avalumab. Uh, And here the same is seen for median progression-free survival. Và nó cũng tương tự như vậy, tức là kết quả nó giúp cải thiện được thời gian sống con đến độ cải mà điều kiện trong phát triển của bệnh. Next slide, please. So this demonstrated uh, an improved overall survival um, 
uh, relative to the controls. Thì mình thấy rằng mình so với Benton thì cái tỷ lệ sống con chúng một năm thì nó cao hơn hơn nhiều và nó có ý nghĩa thống kê khác biệt giữa hai năm. So I included this study from a few weeks ago because it really highlights how rapidly the management of advanced bladder cancer is changing in the past few years. Mà nó cũng thấy được rất nhanh chóng về việc mà trong cái việc mà kia áp dụng thực hành về cái việc cái sử dụng cáo lúc mắt này trong những bệnh nhân nam mà nó có cái bệnh nhân mà có cái ung thư bằng quang và giai đoạn xâm lấn. Next slide, please. Uh, next slide. So for second line therapy, pembro pembrolizumab is preferred. Okay, lựa chọn thứ hai trong điều trị đó là cái pembrolizumab. Next slide, please. So as you can see in this diagram, the uh, PDL1 and PD1 are expressed by the Excuse me, the PD1 is expressed by the T cell. And so the PDL1 itself is expressed by the tumor cell and deactivates the T cell thus allowing the tumor cell to survive. And as you can see on the right, the anti pd one or anti-PD1 block that interaction, thus allowing the T cell to kill the tumor. Thì khi mà mình sử dụng cái tổng lại cái BD1 lên để bao ung thư này thì tức là mình block hoàn lại thì lúc nữa là nó không cả được cái tế bao T cell nữa thì cái tế bao T cell này nó có thể giúp và nó thể tiêu diệt được cái tế bao ung thư. Next slide please. So uh, as I already said, T cells express PD1 checkpoint proteins. The tumor cells PDL1 binds PD1, and the immune response is inhibited. Next slide, please. Are you? Can you guys still hear me? I think I lost audio from y'all. Katie, can you hear me? Katie, can you hear me? Hi, yeah, sorry, I can hear you. I was having a hard time unmuting myself. I think we're all okay, just- got it. Okay, got it, fair enough. So uh, here's a, another study from the New England Journal from 2017 about Pembro. Because, uh, continue. Ne next slide. Can, can, you, can you hear me, Donna Slippy? Say again. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. Okay, good. Okay, good. Okay. okay, excellent. So uh, here you can see that uh, both overall survival and progression-free survival are improved for the patients on Pembro. Next slide, please. So in this study, there was an average of uh, approximately three months improved survival for the patients on Pembro compared to chemotherapy. Okay, next slide, please. So uh, I wanted to point out that Pembro is a very expensive drug. So even in the US, its use is limited. One study estimated it costs about a million dollars for a single US patient. <laughs> 
Em đã có đắt cho đó là cái Các bạn thấy là để sử dụng cho một bình nhân là tới 1 triệu đô cho một bình nhân Và người ta có, có giờ chuyển ra riêng việc khoảng 2 3 tỷ cho bình nhân Lợi dụng 1 triệu đô để sống thêm được 3 tháng thôi Ok, next slide please So, uh, I want to just discuss, you know, the role of the urologist in these patients with advanced bladder cancer. Um, we should aggressively investigate hematuria. We should perform a quality TURBT and restage that TURBT if high grade TA or T1. And we should do regular follow up for your bladder cancer patients. And a meticulous lymph node dissection in cystectomy patients. Uh, next slide, please. So this is an image from the Campbell's textbook from this year. And the standard dissection is from the iliacs, the common iliacs, down to the obturator and hypogastrics. And in some case, oh, sorry. Uh, in some cases, we'll also obtain the paracaval and periaortic nodes. Excuse me. In some cases, we'll also remove the paracaval and paraaortic lymph nodes. You may be familiar with a study from five or six years ago comparing USC data to ERS Studer's data in Austria. In that study, they did not demonstrate a clear difference for patients that had had uh, the dissection above the common iliacs. Next slide, please. Uh, here's a picture of what the lymph node dissection should look like when complete. Um, we really try to have a meticulous node dissection with all the vessels skeletonized. Uh, next slide, please. So, uh, to discuss the proper extent of the lymph node dissection, next slide. So, here's a uh, 2019 study from European Urology. Next slide, please. This was a randomized controlled trial with 400 patients. They looked at a limited lymph node dissection of the external iliac, internal iliac, and obturator nodes. And an extended node dissection up to the IMA. Next okay. So uh, here you can see that there was uh, no difference in recurrence free survival for these two groups. Uh, next slide. Next slide, please. And likewise, there's no difference in cancer specific survival. Uh, next slide, please. 
and there was no difference in overall survival. Uh, next slide, please. So in summary, advanced bladder cancer management necessitates a multidisciplinary approach. And this really rapid and exciting evolution of novel immunotherapy agents. And next slide. And that's all I have. So what questions can I answer for you? Dr. Stubby, thank you so much for the beautiful lecture. Thank um, you, sir. I, I just have one question. So how can we, uh, how can we evaluate this patient that respond to the uh, neo agent therapy or radio therapy? How can we evaluate the patient? Sure. Yeah. After they've received it? Yeah. Yeah, so we would follow them with CAT scans or MRIs, or if you have it available, a PET scan, if your facility has one. Okay. Usually it's after the three or three months or the two or three months after the, the, the cycle of the treatment. Oh. That's right. Generally about two to three months after com completion of their cycles. Okay. So I, in, in the slide, I, I see the B, PDL1 positive, positive patient. So how can we uh, screen in this patient is positive with PDL1 or not, not negative? But Kaya uh, is in a uh, laboratory tank. Yeah, mm -hmm. if available. But again, if you don't have it, those studies show that patients can still do well with it. And you know, I think the, the bigger issue is, you know, does the hospital have the resources to provide the drug. Okay. So in the US, is it covered by the insurance or not? The, like, the immunotherapy? Well, yeah. Right. It depends. It, it's complicated, but it depends. You know, like, as you can see, you know, I, I'm in the army and all of our patients have their care covered, but in the civilian world, um, it may not be, and patients may not be able to get this. Okay. So, um, Another question, in, 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 your, in, your, in your hospital, how many K of radical cystectomy you perform per year? Uh, about 20. 20. Mm -hmm. uh, the reason why we asking you about the management of bladder cancer, because in Vietnam, we have a lot of the, the patients. They usually come to hospital lately, so usually at the T3 tumor and uh, we only have a radical cystectomy only, as no seat blasting is not available in our country. So, so I, I think you know if you're doing a good cystectomy, you're and a good lymph node dissection. I think you're helping those people. You know they don't if you don't have um, you know, if you don't have cisplatin or immunotherapy, you don't have it. And I think that's why I wanted to focus on the lymph node dissection part of my talk because. I think, yeah, the cystectomy matters, but the lymph node dissection really matters a lot. Some of those patients with a good lymph node dissection, even with metastatic disease, you're going to cure them. So uh, I, I wouldn't hesitate and I wouldn't feel bad at all about not having cisplatin. Do your cystectomy and a good lymph node dissection. Yes, I got it, thank you. And um, can I have a point here? How many how many cystectomies do you guys perform a year? Uh, we in our hospital maybe uh, 30, 30 every year. Twenty, you said. Thirty, thirty k. Thirty. 30. Okay. Yeah. Uh, in the in the in the, our city, we have two hospitals, so totally maybe over one hundred beds. Over okay. one hundred per year in our city. Yeah. Yeah, but you know those those people need help, and I mean that's that's if that's what you have, that's what you have, and that yeah. I wouldn't feel at all bad about that. Um, in the radical cystectomy, uh, how about the, uh, the sexual function and the 
such your function how to preserve when you need the medical cystectomy for the patient. Right. So you can do nerve sparing for males, um, just like you would for a prostate. I would say in general, particularly if you've got a patient with, excuse me, if your population has a lot of advanced disease, uh, you know, we don't necessarily try that. We'll write it off and um, just try just consider the, the oncologic aspects of the operation and not do that. But if you have, say, a younger patient with less advanced disease, you can certainly spare nerves just like you would for a prostate. Okay. Now, how about in the female? We preserve the or in the female patient? Uh, we do not. You do not. Okay. 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 Uh, in the T2, in the T2 tumor, in the T2 tumor, so you perform the TURP uh, when the T2P, uh, T2P, uh, what is the option treatment for the patient? So again, if, if you don't have cisplatin, I would just go straight to cystectomy. If, if it was say in a, um, you know, in a diverticulum, uh, you could consider a partial cystectomy, but a T2B is going to be a fairly aggressive, um, have an aggressive course, so we would recommend a cystectomy for that patient. In our, in our world, if they could get neoadjuvant chemotherapy, we would give them neoadjuvant chemotherapy. Okay. Um, from the rainbow cystectomy, what kind of the, um, you need a reversion, you need like a neoplatter or Yep. So we'll do, we generally don't do, at our facility, we won't do uh, continent uh, catheterizable stomas, uh, but we will do either ileal conduits or neobladders. So what do, what do you prefer, ideal conduit or neobladder? Um, it really depends on the patient. For younger patients, we'll generally prefer the neobladder. Um, if it's an older patient, um, we generally prefer the uh, ileal conduit. Uh, in the U.S., a lot of the academic centers really prefer the neobladders, um, but for older patients, like they're, you know, I think the data shows their quality of life is the same, so we don't we don't hesitate to do a conduit, um, and patients generally tolerate it quite well. Okay. How about you guys? Will you do neobladders? Yes, we do for young younger patient, and uh, that's great. Uh, yeah. And better, better for cancer in the blood and that we do the ideal can be. Yeah, that's great. This is just fine. We don't have any question. Okay. Well, thank you so much for the lecture. We learned a lot of things from the Bazaar's beautiful lecture. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. It was really an honor to be able to speak with you folks uh, this evening for me, this morning for you. Um, it was a real pleasure, and I'm uh, deeply honored to be able to speak with you all. Yeah, hopefully we, we hope to have a uh, next time and see you in Vietnam. Uh, because uh, because uh, because the last year we had uh, the, the IBU show and come to Vietnam, uh, but it's due, due to COVID-19. COVID so everything is stopped. So uh, is I uh, hopefully the next year everything can control and hope to see you in Vietnam and give a lecture directly. Yeah, I would I would love it. It would be great. Uh, yeah, thank you so much. Thank you. All right, Katie. Uh, yeah, you too. Have a good day. Yeah, thank you so much, Dr. Sturbus. We're good. Thanks. Thanks for running my slides for me. I appreciate that. Oh yeah, no problem. And thank you so much to our colleagues that way. Um, we really appreciate you coordinating the lecture and for attending. Thank you. And thank you for translating. Casey nói là cũng rất là vui vui vì mình có cái sự hoạt động tích cực các giải như cái hội này. Cái hội thảo và hiện tại có rất nhiều người tham gia trong cái buổi cái 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 bài giảng đó này. Thank you. All right. Have a good day. Bye-bye. Bye.